and I have on the back table, I have some cookies and some little bottles of water, and that the helps us. Cookies are really good. Yeah. <laughs> They're oatmeal there. Oatmeal. Um, and, okay, so um, I'm going to call this meeting to order. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Um, I think the first thing we need to do is a voice vote of the minutes from last time, so thank you for remembering that. Um, <laughs> every time. So, um, do you do pass out the Yeah, they're on the phone table. Okay. All the tables. Okay, so um, unless there's any objection to anybody wanting to look it over, then uh, please, if you approve of the minutes from the uh, November 10th meeting, please say aye. 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 So, any opposed? Great, thank you very much. So, um, uh, Mrs. Chapin, are you going to do your principal's report? Mm -hmm. um, we received a check from the PTA today for the document cameras, and so I signed the purchase order this afternoon for 13. So they're being, they should be here within the week. So thank you. We'll get those out to teachers, and everybody's really excited about that. Yay. That's great. Um, the, uh, the acting, acting superintendent is presenting the, uh, his budget <coughs> proposal to the school board tonight. Um, <coughs> the principals were briefed on it this morning and we can't really share the information because it's embargoed until the uh, presentation tonight. But, um, you know, pay attention. There, There's going to be some room for some advocacy and some, um, you know, um, parents making sure that Board of Supervisors knows that we value the system and, and what we need and all of that. So, um, you know, um, the information will be out tomorrow um, in the press. So we'll be, um, you know, sh we can share some information, you know, once it's, the timing of our meeting is kind of bad because I can't, <laughs> I can't share. Um, we're also involved in a, which was another meeting this morning, was to provide input for the um, search for the new superintendent that's kicking off. There are opportunities <coughs> for um, anyone in the community, parents, community members, whatever. There's a list on the website of times that you can go to somewhere, and they're all over the county, to provide input to the search firm that is looking. It's the same firm that we used um, when we hired Dr. Garza, and so they met with the principals this morning, and or the elementary principals, and we did some things to provide some input. So um, that's going on. They, the, um, they're hoping to be doing interviews in March, and second interviews in April, and having somebody ready to uh, come on board July 1st. So that's good. Um, um, our uh, proposal for level four uh, passed through region two, and has been submitted to the um, leadership team. So, um, you know, everything's on track with that. So it should be fine. That's great. Um, yep. So we're, um, you know, continuing to talk about that. And, you know, everything's going fine. No snow days so far. Yay. <laughs> um, three day week next week. So I am going to be going out of town next week. So I will see if the, um, everything will go rolling along. Questions, comments, what? I got an email about an effort at Oakton High School to establish a pantry. I saw that. Is it something you'd be interested in me attending or talking about? Or? Um, we, we work with Food for Others, um, and some of you have been involved in preparing those or, or counting out the little power packs. weekend power packs that are sent home with some of the kids. Um, I'm not sure our community would go that far. Um, you know, Oakton is, is might as well be around on the other side of the world. Oh, well, I think that they want, it was an effort at Oakton High School to learn about how to establish a pantry at your own school. Oh, oh, and oh, oh So oh. it would be like mm -hmm. establishing a closet or I guess a yeah. space where you could drop things off and pick things up, drop things off. Our biggest issue is storage space, you know, um, for things like that. Um, if you wanted to go find out about it, I don't know if we want, might want to partner with maybe some of the other schools. We are in a partnership with um, Mason Crest and Westlawn 
for a thing called um, school readiness teams and we work with preschool providers and, and um, Head Start and SAC and all kinds of people from the county and all. We meet once a month and I don't know if that might be a partnership, you know, something that that group might want to be involved in. So, yeah. But we typically you go to Food for Others. And I know that Food for Others um, is in the community at least once or twice a week with So I wanted to talk a little bit about some upcoming events. Um, the next PTA event is we have restaurant night on January 26th, which was, I think there was a flyer in today's Thursday folder and I forgot to put it in the weekly email, but it'll be in the weekly. So it's Paisano's pizza, and I think you can order, they'll do, like if you order a pizza for delivery, I think it's done on Little River Turnpike, and if you order the pizza for delivery, they'll give a pro, part of the proceeds to Woodburn. So we're gonna be, trying to promote that. There's a restaurant night in February the 28th that Aaron also, one of our volunteers, got Chipotle for restaurant night mm -hmm. over at um, Merrifield, at the, that Merrifield Shopping Center. So that was so cool, because I told her, I was like, trying to get a restaurant night over in Merrifield, because it might get, you know, because some of us live like that way, but some of us live this way too. So um, she had got Chipotle, and Chipotle gives you half of proceeds if you say you're there for the school. So we're gonna try to do a big push on advertising for that to get people to go to the that night. February 28th. Um, the, after that, we have movie night on, um, movie night is on February 24th. So movie night is before Chipotle. Um, that's Friday, February 24th. I did a little survey on that I posted on Facebook and put in the Thursday email to vote on what movie you want to watch. Mm -hmm. um, Angry Birds did win the vote <laughs> last time. We found it did kind of lose kids' attention by the end, but that may be true for any movie. So uh, please let us know what you think is a movie that your kids would really want to go see and maybe that wouldn't lose them like 20 minutes in and have them running around the gym for <laughs> 45 minutes, but not. <laughs> I think that's almost irresistible. It's probably, no it's how probably good the movie is, that's it, how it's going to end. It's, it's probably like, not the movie, right? It's probably <laughs> just the kids. They're just happy to be together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but I was like, it'd be good if we could get a better movie. But there's a, so we had a bunch of great suggestions. We had a PTA board meeting a couple of nights ago and generated some suggestions. And then John Alexander's daughters know that I'm on the hunt, so they keep telling me, we voted again, and this is what we think this time. So, they have some ideas too. It's good to get from the like ground level troops. <laughs> so please um, let me know or take the survey to see what we have to show. We do have a mom who's volunteering to lead that event. Katie Brophy is organizing it also. So <laughs> she's not here tonight. Um, that's really great. We'll have concessions if she's here. Um, <coughs> so that is, and then we have, after that we have March 3rd is the Wildcat Dance. So, um, Dance is so fun. We have the same DJs as last year for these like crazy retired couple who like play chicken music and mm -hmm. <laughs> it's really fun. So um, we'll have a photo booth again. This year Jenna Bonelli is willing to do the photo booth again, which is so great. And um, the one thing about the dance is you have to stay. <laughs> so, because it's very important to have the chaperones. But I really enjoyed it last year. My daughter really enjoyed it. So excited to have that again. That's And the dance is free. So we'll be, um, so since the dance is free, we don't do any like pre-registry, right? Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so we sell things. We sell um, uh, the sixth graders. Sixth sell. Grade. Oh yes. Yeah. So I need to contact the sixth grade mm -hmm. teachers yep. to set it because they're going to do concessions, mm -hmm. right? They typically do. You you can check with them. If you want to check with them. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And that's March third. March third. March third. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So everything is booked. The DJs are booked. The gym. It's book, so it's just a matter of advertising and then getting right. seeing that the sixth grade wants to sell concessions, which I assume they will, because they'll make the money for their energy. Last year you had like a little marketplace downstairs. Yeah, yes. Are, okay. are you thinking of doing that again? I or? would be happy to do that again. I asked, you, was it a scowl or? No. No, okay. I just, it was like people paid for those. I mean, you know, that was a, it was a, 
fundraiser, like they paid to have a table there. Okay. So you might want to find I have out to find the link. Trip. Yeah, I think Laura Wright told me who organized that. I, I just haven't reached Peggy. out to her yet. What? Who? Was it Peggy last year? Okay. I know she's done it in the past. I don't know if she yeah, last year. Yeah, I don't remember. If she did okay. Last year. So let me find out because I know yeah, and I know that there's. Yeah, you need to get on. You know. I know. To, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't a scout. It was just. Like, <laughs> yeah. Thinking. I mean, yes, so of that course. That does require some. Yeah, I mean, and of course, since we've got the parents here, it's a great yeah, opportunity yeah. and a great thing. Yeah, so we'll definitely, I'll try to send out emails on that tomorrow mm -hmm. to start again. Because I, I know others have approached me about doing like a vendor affair here, so this is yeah. the chance to do it. So. Yeah. Um, okay, and then, so I'm going to talk just a little bit about what's going to happen at the next two PTA meetings. So it's kind of funny, PTA is like, when you're doing the calendar, which I had to sit down with Bridget and do in the summer, it's kind of funny, it's like the first half of the year, is all events, like event, event, event. And then in the spring, we sort of turned a focus on our own kind of, you know, bylaws and our elections and everything. So um, so in the, the next PTA event is gonna be March 16th. We'd like to do a, a potluck, which um, they did last year, was really super fun. They were able to do a Chinese New Year. I think it, that's gonna be a little bit late for us to do like a Lunar New Year, but we'll still do a, a potluck, but at that, meeting we need to vote on a nominating committee so the nominating committee is going to be three people who are going to search for next year's officers uh, Laura said she would be on the nominating committee so we'll need to ask for two more people now um, I was on the nominating committee last year which is how I got to where I am today <laughs> but I will assure anybody who's going to work on the nominating committee this year is going to be an easier job because unless somebody runs against us, Nilima is willing to stand as secretary, I'm willing to stand as president. John, we are going to need to find a new treasurer, and I think Aaron Austin is willing to be vice president. So we're going to need nominating committees, we have to search for someone who's willing to be treasurer next year. I mean, this is, I mean, of course anybody can run for any office at any time, but this is kind of what we're seeing in the future. So um, we'll be trying to reach out to you guys to ask, can you be the serve on the nominating committee. So the next meeting we'll vote on the nominating committee. The meeting after that, which is on, I wrote all this down and then it didn't come up. There's a meeting after that where the nominating committee presents who's gonna be the run for office. And then the meeting after that, we vote for the officers. So we need, I think we kind of need, and then in the middle of all that, we also have to vote on bylaws. So we basically have to try to get, I think a bigger turnout than this for the last three meetings of the year. And we will do it with food. And, uh, April 27th. April 27th. The, so that's when the nominating committee presents the slate presents of officers. Slate. And then we have a June 1st meeting, which is the meeting where we hold the election for next yes. year's officers. Um, so that's going to be some business we have to do over the last three PTA meetings of the year. Um, okay. And March um, 31st is bingo night, which is awesome. And then there is the fun run after that, which I wrote down what day it is. Oh, and now, fun run is, and the fitness fair is going to be May 12th. Okay. Um, and Erin wants to work on the fun run, which is great. She's a runner during summer. Great. Right. Awesome. That's good. So she's determined to get the weather to <coughs> comply. Um, <laughs> she, she was really mad when she found out they just ran around the basketball court. <laughs> so, but. It's like so yeah, oh right, I know. Well, I just, you can't have her running around in the mud. I mean, yes, so, yeah. Around, yeah. So yeah. So um, right. So she's going to make the weather cooperate this year. Um, okay. So I think that's all I have. That's all I had on my list to mention. Um, and then uh, Don is not here for a treasurer's report, and so I don't know uh, what the budget is. But we did write. But he actually any report he would have presented today would have been kind of out of date because I never turned in my receipts for Gingerbread House. <laughs> I bet Jessica hasn't. Oh, and then the other thing is donuts with dads. Do you and we'll put out a flyer on right. donuts with dads. I think it's in March. It's in it's March. March. What is it? Um, donuts with. Wait a minute. March. Um, Friday in March. Yeah. March tenth. Tenth is it? Yeah. And then yeah, March. it is tenth. Yeah. yeah. Um. So March tenth, donuts with dads. <coughs> we'll be asking. We still have some Dunkin' Donuts gift cards. Okay. So, um, which will be super fun. That was, month was a long time later. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah, it was really good. I didn't think we made a cut.
can the rescheduled charge yet or is it that we can't we cancel this thing. We just sort of thought about like could we do and we really loved last year's science night so much and we yeah. thought could we replicate that in some way and then we decided we can't. <laughs> so um, but we would have science night again sometime. We here, did right? have, because that was offered to us free from that science, the Children's Science Museum. Uh -huh. This year, we were uh, able to send, um, uh, we got a free field trip right, yeah, in our that's fifth right. grade, mm -hmm. because they're the ones who take the science festival, so we sent them on the field trip, and they happened to run into Dave Marston, the senator there, state senator there, so it was a big picture off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and then that, we- That was like in September. We do really want to try to schedule a cultural mm -hmm. assembly, something. So we're still, Christiane and I are talking we're about, can we find, because okay. the assembly we had, we had a um, science, a math magician right. guy, and he was so fun. Like, it yeah. was really, yeah, the kids loved it. The kids, loved the kids, it. kids, the kids went it. crazy for yeah. it. Yeah. We also are having, we have um, a string trio here from NSO that was the, saw one group of kids today My God, in was small fun. groups in their specials classes. And then we've got another jazz group next week, kind of seeing the other part. And they're, you know, so those are things that we are doing. We are having a pianist from the FSO that's gonna be third grade. So, you know, there are some things that we're able to get, you know, kind of free, so. Um, okay, so yeah, so no treasurer's report. Committee reports, I said restaurant nights. Uh, Laura isn't here in Richmond. Um, I, I think they're, to this week is the last week to sign up for the Enrichment Program, so if you still haven't signed up, probably, since you're here, you probably <laughs> have either signed up or not chosen not to. Um, okay, so then we said new business, we talked about the nominating committee and the bylaws, um, schools close next week, and restaurant night. Okay, is there anything else that I haven't talked about? Yes. Oh, I just, uh, you were talking about the, um, potluck from last year. Yeah. I had organized someone from the Virginia 529 yeah. to come talk about savings, college savings, and mm -hmm. I can contact them again. It was a really good presentation because they basically give you the information and then and then you kind of do it on your own through the website. Um, if you're, I just wanted to put it out there because I didn't want to forget to email you. If you all want us to, want me to organize that again, I'm happy to do that you know, tag on to the end of your PTA meeting if you want that. Why don't we see, why don't we reach out and see if maybe we can do a yeah. poll or something and see okay. if people would be interested in that. Sure. I know that it did, it, that it did make that particular meeting into a very long one, yeah. so yeah. we might want to think about can she shorten her presentation or something. Short enough, because there, there was a lot of stuff going on that night, so. Yeah. Um, okay, anything, anything else? Okay, so then, um, so that's all for from us, so then, start our presentation on internet safety. Well, if, if you don't know me, I'm Miss Gannon. I'm the school counselor. <laughs> I think I've met all the parents that are here tonight. <laughs> um, I want to introduce um, Alicia Clark. She is from the Office of Student Safety and Wellness here at Fairfax County. And we're going to get her set up in the, um, at the projector here. And she can describe a little bit of what actually that office is, the Office of Student Safety and Wellness. That would be great. They, they take care of a lot of our bullying, cyberbullying, drug information, a lot of information out to the schools and to the community. So she'll talk a little bit more about that. And we'll just get her set up. So maybe we'll just take a little break while she can set up. Absolutely. Have a cookie, get cookie, some more water. Cookie break. <laughs> Oh, sure, sure. I wasn't ready for that, but yes, that's okay. fine. <laughs> you don't have to watch. You don't have you don't to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you know, it might be awesome to have, so just send it to me so I can fatigue myself. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Oh, really? Oh, you know what? We have to play. Sounds <laughs> <laughs> like you're. Yeah. Nobody's got one. Oh, yeah. the bake sale at the election day, right? refer to my office as the SR in our office because that's the one everyone associates um, our office with. So every year we are responsible for actually producing and updating the SR and R and actually um, it's disseminating that information to the schools and to the principals. In addition, there's a mirage of things that happen within our office. Our school social workers um, <coughs> are out of this office as well, as well as conflict resolution and peer mentoring. In addition to that, we have restorative justice, which a lot of schools are starting to implement um, as a additional, um, I don't want to say an additional consequence, um, but instead of suspending the kid, they look at this mediation um, piece where you can have the, the two participants come together in a circle and they talk about the incident from their different perceptions and then come to a common ground or a common understanding. And then my other job is, um, I am a prevention educator, but I'm responsible for the alcohol, tobacco, and other drug seminars. So I do the um, drug awareness programs for both the students and the parents in the county. Um, restorative justice, peer mentoring, conflict resolution, counselors, SRNR, right? <laughs> so I think that's just a hodgepodge um, of things that we do. Um, but we're all about protecting the student and making sure that the student have the services in place that they need to be successful in Fairfax. Um, and also, if there are any questions in regards to discipline or procedures, that's what we also implement. Okay. So today, I'm here because I'm, this last piece of my job is I do the internet safety um, presentations and bullying presentations for the county. Tonight, we're just gonna talk about um, seven topics. Um, and, and what I'll say is, you know, I've I taught high school for 13 years. I don't know how that happened because I still believe I'm 21. But, <laughs> um, you know, just the way the internet has evolved and the way kids are using social media today are totally different than what we were brought up. Um, and, and I joke with the kids, I said, you know, when I was in high school in 1997, eight, <laughs> you know, we had, even how we did research was totally different. You know, we had the, you know, the card catalog in the library, and the kids are like, what do you mean? <laughs> it was like, you know, that big box with all the index cards, and you thumb through and try to figure out what your topic is or where their resource is. Um, so it's totally different. And whereas kids today, and you know, we say that, you know, some kids learn how to use an iPad or a tablet or a cell phone before they learn how to read. So then just think about it, they're manipulating these things. So they're very um, fluid with how to use their internet whereas some of us still have some questions on how to use social media. Um, I say that a lot of my students taught me how to use Snapchat because they were always using Snapchat. Um, so how to do the different filters. It's, it's trendy for them. It's, um, and another piece of it is that it's also about social acceptance on social media. So the first piece I'm going to talk about is internet permeance. Um, I think we've heard the phrase, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Um, and I joke with, and I said, well, that's if the camera is not around or if the internet is not around. Um, today, kids have this perception that, you know, what I post 
I have the power to delete it. And once I delete it, it's gone. And that's not necessarily the case. Um, there's an application that kids are using now called Snapchat. And Snapchat sells the idea that after 15 seconds or 24 seconds, um, whatever they posted is gone. But however, we all know how you know, an IP address works or the internet works. Somewhere there's a log of that information. Um, so that information isn't always gone. And sometimes, and I joke about this, if you post something on Facebook 10 years ago, guess what Facebook does now? It reminds you 10 years later that, that you know you posted that or you were there or you felt a certain type of way about your ex, things <laughs> like this. Um, so it's very interesting. And also, you know, I think the bigger scheme for kids is I think they're starting to observe how social media actually impacts them. Um, witnessing how, or if you're listening to the news or as this is their news source on social media, how people are losing their jobs because of what they post on social media. Or how some students are actually losing their scholarships because of what they post on social media. And, and I say it's more of, think about social media as a camera that goes off every single second of your life. And whereas where I was introduced to the internet at a later age, you know, and started using it more frequently in college when Facebook came about, you know, my autobiography or my internet autobiography is going to be totally different than theirs that they're, when they started using it at 10, 11, 12, 13. So people evolve. What you thought when you were younger is not necessarily going to be the same ideas that you have now. Um, so be very careful as to what you're posting. It doesn't reflect you, it doesn't reflect the values that you want um, others to know about you, the values that your parents um, have instilled. And I think that's the conversation that we need to have with children as this understanding that what you post is a direct reflection of yourself. So think of yourself as a brand. You are your own marketing tool. So if you don't want people to know it, don't post it or if it's not appropriate to share, or it may be controversial, think about what you're doing before you post things. Loss of control. Um, pictures, text, anything that we share can be shared with someone else. And I think it's, I remember, um, I asked the kids, the fifth and sixth grade kids that are um, come in contact with, how many of you ever shared a secret before? And they all raised their hands. And I said, now how many of you have been told a secret. They raise their hands and I go, now, how many of you actually kept that secret? And they go, they look, I was like, I wanna say yes, but I wanna say no. And I said, but that's what happens. When we tell someone a piece of information, we're hoping, we're trusting that they're keeping that information to themselves and that they're not sharing it with someone else. So when we send that text, me text message or when we post that picture on Instagram or Snapchat, we're hoping that the people we're sending it to is not sharing that piece of information. Um, but the reality is, is that we can't stop someone once we give them um, the image or the text. It's kind of like giving someone a Christmas present and then say, hey, I want it back in the new year. It, it, it doesn't work that way. Um, the biggest, the great analogy I have and I actually have from Memorial is the difference between public and private. Um, and kids have this idea that if my settings are private, then you know those are the people that I trust, this is my circle. Um, and whereas it's not public. Um, but however, think about public, their school is public. Home, home is private. But the moment you invite someone into your home, you actually give them public access. So think about that information on um, social media. You're giving people access to what you're saying, what you're thinking. Um, how many of you saw the Mariah Carey New Year's Eve non-performance? <laughs> I don't know what it was. <laughs> right. It was awesome, right? <laughs> um, this non-performance was um, captured online. You know, she was there, and she knows she's a performer, so she's expecting that this information is going to get out, it's going to be shared. But what she probably didn't expect was how the internet was going to take a hold of it, manipulate it to create memes, or even the San Antonio Spurs did a little mock with their um, mascot. Um, she no longer had that control. She no longer could say, you can't post that or you can't share this. And just think about those things. Or um, kids sometimes take pictures and they post it and then their friends create memes. Um, and memes are just um, a picture or image and it usually has some type of catchy saying or text attached to it. Um, so understand that what you share can be shared with someone else. It can be manipulated 
to where it's not exactly what you said. Um, I've learned that kids have become more technology savvy. Um, so the things that we know how to do, um, they know how to do and some. Um, like Photoshop, I've never understood Photoshop, but they somehow know how to do it better than I do. Um, so just that idea. Now sharing too much, um, we live in a world now where information, um, they jokingly say it's not real life unless you post it on social media. Um, if that, that breakup, if you're in a relationship, it's not real until it's on social media. So everything we do is documented in some form. And I have to admit that when I go out with my girlfriends to dinner, what do I do? I post that we're at a restaurant, I post the picture of the food or the plate that I ordered, and then um, I post that I'm home now and things like this. So everything we do is documented. And I, I tell kids is, um, that the more you post, you're allowing yourself to become vulnerable. Um, and I say this because people are always watching. They're trying to identify your patterns. Um, and then just recently my house was broken into. Um, and I think I live in a fairly safe neighborhood. You know, I think, you know, I'm very aware of my surroundings, but I never realized that someone was actually looking at my patterns, like when I'm at work, when I'm leaving, when I'm gone. And just think, if you add that piece of social media, you're actually telling people more information than you would normally do to your neighbors. Um, also, we actually encourage parents not to share information like sometimes the school they go to or the bus stop or what time you're picking them up from school um, just because that information becomes public knowledge. And you know, you allow, like I said, the more you post, the more information you share, the more vulnerable you become. In addition, um, I think we've all done it. We've been on vacation and what we post, we post pictures of our vacation. But the rule of thumb now is to post those pictures when you come back or to, um, you know, have to say, not my whole family's on vacation or something like that. Just being careful as to the message that you're sending to other people. Um, in addition to this, is we talk about over posters um, and that's people who post way too much information. Um, and I ask the kids, like, name some celebrity over-posters. And they go, Kim Kardashian, um, Taylor Swift. And they name a whole bunch of people. And I said, now, and I make the Kim Kardashian reference because recently she was robbed in Paris. And I said, well, you know she has a home in Miami. You know she has a home in LA. But how do they know she's in Paris? And how do they know she has, um, I think it was a $10 million diamond ring. It's like, how do people know this information? That's what she does. She posts everything on social media. So being very careful that you're not sharing too much. And that being said, we move on to online predators. Um, online predators are adults who usually um, create an online profile or persona to attract the attention of a youth. Um, and I t encourage kids to be very careful as to who they accept um, as friends, and I think the terminology that social media sites use um, is very catchy. Um, just in Facebook, they use the word friends, and some, some people have 500, 600, 1,000 friends. And I think to myself, I only really have five, <laughs> five friends. Um, so but other, other people that I know, um, I associate with or went to school with. Um, but when you use the term friend, you think of it as a trusted, a loyal person, whereas sometimes they're my friend on Facebook. And I think it was, the statistics said that you only had to interact with someone five times on social media before you started to consider them as a friend. And just think about that. Some of these people that they're interacting with, they've never met in person. You know, you just know them from your um, Snapchat feed or your Instagram feed. And I, I make the analogy back to, do you remember Instant Messenger, AIM Instant Messenger and the Yahoo chat groups? Mm -hmm. And you know we all engaged in conversations, and the more you were in those chat groups, you be, um, you allowed yourself to share more information with those people um, because it was just a false. I don't want to say it's a false sense, but it, you just had that sense of you were comfortable with them and sharing that information. So, and my rule for kids is that if you don't know them in person, or if you can't go to school and see them, if they're not within your community, your church, or you know your grandparents' neighborhood actually don't accept those people on social media. Because um, I, I like to have the tangible with the virtual um, world. 
And also, and back to online predators, and just be careful of people who say, um, who ask certain questions or give comments, very general comments as, I know your mom and dad. Well, mom and dad are very general terms, right? Or, um, I know what school you go to. And I say this, if someone knows the neighborhood, they can Google what school you go to. So there's a lot of information online that people can actually figure out to use to have kids buy into um, to accepting them to be friends. Cyberbullying. Um, like I said, kids know how to use the internet very um, effectively. And sometimes they, the more you become comfortable using something, you actually start to become careless about what you're saying sometimes. Um, I make the analogy to a math problem. Um, when you first learn how to do that math problem, you, you were very slow, you were very methodical in your process. The more you um, understood the project problem or how to complete the steps in a problem, you started to do it more swiftly. And then eventually you, you understood it, you did it very um, effectively, but sometimes you made errors because you were doing it too fast. And you just think about it, social media, they're on it all the time. So are they always going to post what's appropriate or something that is um, positive? No. But sometimes kids um, are sharing things online that can take off and spread like wildfire. Wildfire. Um, I tell the kids, you know, the goal of social media, you think about Instagram, is to get as many likes as possible. Um, Twitter is to get the, how, how many retweets as possible. Everything is to go viral. Um, so with cyberbullying, um, it can happen once, but it can be shared multiple times. Because um, in the county, in, in the state of Virginia, we look at three things, three characteristics for bullying. The intent to cause harm, the power and balance, and it's repeated over time. But however, with social media, it's posted once, guess what? It happens um, very quickly. It can be shared with multiple people. And I make the reference back to um, a social media case in the fourth district court in regards to MySpace. How many remember MySpace? <laughs> okay. Um, because when I talk about MySpace, it's like, what is that? I was like, never mind. <laughs> um, MySpace, where a group of kids actually decided to create a fake page um, where they would post mean pictures um, and say mean things about a student. Um, this young girl didn't know about it. The kids actually created this picture, um, this page at home on their home server. Um, so they thought they were fairly safe from school. Um, eventually, this young lady found out about the page. Um, someone at school accessed the page on the school server, um, and then the information was shared. So the principal decided to actually assign a consequence to the people who created these pages. Um, and that's where the court um, hearing actually came in, where the parents said, you know, my kid did it at home, the school doesn't have a right to, you know, discipline. But the court ruled that if it causes a foreseeable disruption to the learning environment, you know, the school has the right to assign a consequence. And I, and I tell kids, that's a very thin line. Think about it. If she no longer can concentrate because she finds out about that page in school, that's a disruption to the learning environment. If kids are talking about it and a teacher has to redirect their class, that's a disruption to the learning environment. Um, if someone has to take time to address that situation, it's a disruption to the learning environment. So understanding that even though it happens or you created that at home, there's also not a consequence that can be assigned by the school. And then it's also a class one misdemeanor in the state of Virginia. So there's also that legal case. So you can have it in the community and you can have that consequence at school. Um, sexy and trafficking. Um, sexy. I think, and I, I tell parents, like, this topic actually makes me uncomfortable. So I can only imagine how it makes you uncomfortable to um, even have the idea or thought that the kids could possibly be sharing inappropriate pictures. Um, just understand that, you know, this is happening. Um, and, you know, I was, I'll never forget my first presentation I did. You know, I was um, with students, and it was a fifth grade student. And I said, what are some of the internet rules that your parents have for you? And her response was, and this is the first response, no new pictures. And I go, wow, like I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> um, and it's just, it says that parents are actually having these conversations with kids earlier and earlier. You know, where middle school, you probably, or high school, you got the birds and the bees conversation 
but now kids are having it as early as elementary about what not to say or um, what not to post or to share online. Um, sex trafficking, um, just trafficking in gen general um, has been an issue and I must say I was unaware of this issue until about three, four years ago in the county. Um, as I told someone, when you say you live in Fairfax or you work in Fairfax, everyone has this, oh, this grand place, this perfect world. Um, but this actually has been an issue in Fairfax County, and I never thought it was uh, a problem. But trafficking is, you know, in form of sex trafficking and then labor trafficking. And it's actually another form of, of we will say, bullying, where you're manipulating a person to do a certain act. Um, with, and in their mind, they have this idea that, you know, if I don't do this, you're going to harm my family or um, harm someone that I care about or you're going to harm myself. So, you know, they um, actually manipulate young men and women into these crime rings. In this video, I'm not going to play it because it's actually a little bit heavy and it's actually on the Blackboard site for physical education where, because this is a piece they do discuss. I mean, not physical education, um, family life education, or it could be in the health class too, where it's on Blackboard to be pre-approved, um, where there was a ring in Fairfax County where they actually recruited 800 young girls. And the scary part, the scariest part about it is that they actually said that of the 800 girls, not one of them reported it. And just think about it, you have people who know this is going on and they're not speaking up, or the girls are too scared, or young men are too scared to speak of it. Um, I was actually speaking to a principal and she said, you know, she actually experienced this firsthand, where she actually had to go and help one of her stu students from this ring. Um, and I think just recently there was an Uber driver who um, helped or rescued a young girl from, you know, sex trafficking. So I think it was starting to become more well, um, known and people are more aware of what's going on. Okay, with that, we're gonna to transition to applications of what some of your kids could be doing on social media. If you first look at these apps, what do you think they are? <laughs> okay, the fact that I asked means it's a trick question, right? <laughs> okay, um, Kick is a social media app and I'm gonna talk about it later, but if you look at these, you just see a star and a calculator. And honestly, you'll be very surprised at what they could be. This one was behind the calculator. You see it? They're photos. So this is what we call secret apps or what people may call vaults, uh, where kids can actually sh um, hide the information that they don't want you to see on their phones. Mm -hmm. um, and the scary part is, is that you can just go to your app store, your um, iTunes or your Play Store, type in secret app, and then there's a whole list that comes down. And the calculator app, it actually functions as a calculator, but until you enter the right code, it doesn't open anything. Mm -hmm. So you can, it's still at first sight and at first use, you can think it's, oh, it's just give me the math problem, you know? But it's actually things where they are hiding information. And if you look at this one, it's just music notes. So what are you gonna think? This is what my kid is using to um, play music or their music source. Now, Kick, um, the kids always affectionately remind me that Kick is dead. <laughs> um, and that's because Kick actually has disabled, um, everything I would say is GPS located or uh, has a GPS location device on it. But Kick has actually um, disabled the ability to use it in a school area or a school zone. So a lot of kids can't access that piece. So therefore, they're not using it as much or at all. But there's a web browser in Kick. There's a vault in Kick. There's also the direct messaging, instant messaging piece in Kick that kids are using. Now, say so these are the top 12. Um, and I think the interesting piece, and this is the first slide I show kids when I do this presentation, and they get really, really excited about it. And then my friend jokes, um, coworker jokes, he said, and then you disappoint them. I said, how? He said, because you tell them that they can't use it. <laughs> I was like, I do tell them. But legally, it's a federal law that says, especially a lot of the social media apps, is that you have to be 13 years or older to actually use these applications. And what I witnessed is that there are some fourth graders who are actually using these apps. There are third graders who 
where you can get that. Um, and to me, that's scary because are they socially mature enough to handle the content that you could possibly find on these applications? No. And then, as I said earlier, think about it. It's your autobiography. Everyone loves Amazon, right? <laughs> I love Amazon. I was looking for a pair of shoes on Amazon. When I logged into Facebook, guess what I saw? That exact pair of shoes. So everything is tracked. Everything is being used to log into multiple accounts. Um, you use your Facebook account to log into Pinterest. You use your Gmail address to log into YouTube or Musical.ly. If you have Facebook, you can also, actually Facebook owns Twitter, I mean Instagram. So you can use that. You can, all these link back to each other somehow, some way. And anything you do online, it actually, um, even with Instagram, if you're searching for something, now they have an ad feature, that ad pops up. So all these apps are linked back to each other. The kids, they question Minecraft and Clash of the Clans because they're gaming applications. But talking to a parent yesterday, um, in order to use Minecraft, you have to have a group of friends. Um, and there's a chat feature, and there are some people who, um, there are adults who actually, it's a game, so there's a wide array of um, agents or people who are using these games. So, you know, if they have to be a game, you have to have a, I think it's called, um, I think they use the term friend or a gamer profile to use um, Minecraft and Clash of Clans, but if they have that chat feature, that opens the line of communication. Um, and the, each application has a privacy setting, but if you notice anything, if you look at your phone in the morning, Sometimes it tells you these applications have been updated. And when there's an update, things change. Um, Snapchat, which is the ghost, um, they, they sell the idea that things disappear as the reason why the term ghost. Um, but it was one point where you couldn't replay something, but now they update it and you can actually replay a video or um, replay the picture that they um, posted. So. And Instagram, the top left, um, there are individuals or people who are using it, and this is all the selfie phase, um, where they post the pictures, and if they don't have enough likes, they'll delete the picture and then post another one <laughs> in hopes that you know they get more likes. And that goes back to that social acceptance piece, where they're looking for that acceptance in their social groups or from someone online. Um, so making sure that we have that conversation. Okay. A new feature in Facebook, and the kids will all use, will always tell you that Facebook is for us older people. Um, <laughs> and they said we don't use Facebook, but I've noticed is that students do have Facebook profiles, they just may not be using it um, as frequently. Now, Facebook has a new feature called a secret conversation, and this is similar to the, um, the app, app called WhatsApp. Uh, which you can actually um, send direct messages by the internet, but it's encrypted, so no one can break that code. And actually, I believe Facebook owns what apps. Um, as we know, Facebook is comes to be the source of everything, at least what, what I'm learning. Um, so they say the FBI can't even hack these messages. So once you send this message to someone, you can set a time limit. It can be two seconds, five, or 15. Once that person reads that message, it is deleted or um, it is deleted. Um, so there's, you can't go back and see it. But you can see that this person is having a secret conversation. You just can't uh, reveal the contents of it. Now, what can parents do? This is a device <coughs> called Circle. Um, it is by Disney and it's something that I was made aware of at a, um, another presentation. I think it's a pretty cool device. Um, so I'm gonna show you the quick video. And you can, as a parent, you can probably relate to it. So I'm a mom, and I spend more time trying to manage my kids and their devices than anything else. Talking to my kids usually looks like this. Grant, 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 but not anymore. Now that I have Circle. Circle is a new way for families to manage content and time online for every device in the home. Pair Circle with your Wi-Fi and manage everything with the app. So what can Circle do, you ask? How about set a time limit on Facebook for my daughter? <coughs> Circle actually adds up the time she spends on each of her devices and then cuts her off when she's reached her limit. I 
can also set up a filter with Circle to make sure my boys don't end up on parts of the internet they shouldn't even know about. Just set the filter profile by age, and then it's easy to customize it by app and category. But my personal favorite, I can pause the internet. And did you ever wish your kids' devices had a bedtime? Now they do. Just set a sleep time and an awake time. And just like that, me time. Hello, Netflix. And if I want to know how many hours my youngest spent on Minecraft this week compared to last, Circle makes it easy. I wonder how much time I spent on Pinterest. I can also manage Circle from anywhere. Circle will notify me with things like when that Facebook time limit is finally reached. And if it weren't awesome enough already, Circle partnered with these nice folks to make it even, well, more awesome. And now for some much needed family time. Thanks, Circle. Grant, Grant, Grant. We all know that once they have a device in front of them, sometimes they are, you know, someone said it's mom mute, where your mom is talking and they just put you on mute. <laughs> um, I haven't experienced that yet, but I think it's a great thrill. Um, and this is just a cool device. You get to track the amount of time that your kids are online or they're using a certain application. Um, you can limit the time that they're online. Um, and I think this device is only $100, which I think is reasonable. Um, but I strongly and I will always encourage parents to have conversations with their kids about appropriate use. Grant. Also, iPhone, um, Apple, within their systems, they do have a device, um, a setting, and it's called Guided Access. So if you have, um, if your kids are using your phone or even theirs, you can set it a pin code, um, which will actually lock the screen to whatever application they're currently using. Um, so if you have YouTube kids on your phone, but you always allow them to use it, but somehow they end up on the regular YouTube, you can use Got It Access to lock the screen to YouTube Kids. So for that hour or that 15 minutes, they can only use that application. Um, on Android devices, I am an Android user. There is a thing called restricted profiles. And honestly, I can't figure it out. <laughs> um, so, and But I think it's because um, every time they update, they change the features. Um, but I know it's on your tablets and some, some of your mobile phones, but not on all mobile um, Android phones. Okay. What else can parents do? Model the behavior. Um, spoken with one parent and she said her role is when friends come over to play, they collect all cell phones and they stay in the kitchen cabinets. Um, the idea is that if you're coming to play, guess what? You're playing and not using you know, your games. Um, bring out Monopoly, Uno, something, a baseball bat. You, get kids more active. Um, also, the idea of modeling good behavior. And I admit that the first thing I do in the morning is check my phone. I actually hit snooze five times. But <laughs> I then check Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, and then I check my work email, because you know you have to know what you're gonna walk into at work. Um, those things, but at the end of the night, guess what they do? They, they check all of these before they go to sleep, and then they check them all when they wake up. So just modeling that behavior, and some people had implemented that, you know, that cell phones are charged in the kitchen at night, and you only get them as you're walking out the door in the morning. Um, that way, once you have started your day, that's when you get your phone. Um, a parent asked me, well, I know what my kid is doing. Um, I can trust my kid, but it's other kids that they're worried about. Um, and I've always tell parents, I say, that's the hardest piece, because you can't control or regulate someone else's kid. But I, t I tell them when it was time for me to get in trouble when I was in school, my friends never called me <laughs> because they knew my parents' expectations. My parents were very visible. Um, they were very clear about what their expectations were for me. So I think you know it's one thing to communicate it to our kids, but re-emphasizing it and um, telling the kids that are um, friends with our children what their, your expectations are for them as well. So when you come to our house, my expectation is that you're not using the internet um, or that you're not using your cell phone. Um, just having those conversations or what is appropriate for your child 
um, or what you want your child to be aware of. Um, also, parents equal love. I tell kids, you know, the, the one thing parents want to do is love you and protect you. But they can't protect you if they're not if you're not communicating with them, if you're not fully um, honest with them as to what you may be doing online. Um, so I always encourage kids if you have passwords on your phone, your parents should know those passwords. Um, and that could be something you do as a contract. Um, I was always amazed with my friend. It seemed as if he knew every single thing about his daughter. And then I realized he had an app called SMS Backup, so he was reading all her text messages. Um, it worked for him, but then I was amazed that she also communicated everything with him because it was very clear as to what he expected of her um, and had random phone check-ins. It could be Wednesday night or it can be the morning before she goes to school where he will just take her phone, put in her password, and just look through what's going on. Um, and it's about trust and establishing that trust and saying these are my expectations, this is what I expect of you. Um, and just being consistent in how you regulate it. Are there any questions you may have? When do you go to Sorry, when do kids get phones? I have a first grader. <laughs> that is up to the parent. Um, I've noticed that it's a, it's a range. There are some kids who have them in second grade just to communicate with their parents or their older siblings, I, I think it's more of when you feel responsible, I mean, that your kid is responsible enough to handle this. Um, think more fifth, sixth grade is appropriate um, than earlier grades, so that would be my opinion. I think some principals or counselors would agree with that. Um, but it, it depends, it varies. And, and what I know is that, you know, they may not have a phone, but they may have an iPad, so it's just, what device are you giving them? Because you can give them a phone, but it doesn't have to be a smartphone. You can just give them that flip phone. They may not think it's cool, but if it's just to communicate, then that's what they're using it for. And they have, I think they have like, like phones now that like, I think on a watch or maybe on a regular phone where it'll only accept a call from you and they can only call you or something. I don't right. know if I've heard that. I don't really know if that's true, but I don't know how much they cost, but yeah. it's like only used for communication between So I was going to ask, you know, for the dad who has the passwords and he goes in and does the random check, if the kids are now using these secret apps, like they, you can't possibly, even if you have their passwords and, and know everything, you don't because they're hiding it, right? Mm -hmm. Like they're going to be faster and better than we are, and we won't have any idea. And like whatever controls we put in, they'll figure out how to hack, and it's like really scary. <laughs> It is, because you realize that you, you think you are 10 steps ahead of them, but they're actually a football step ahead of you. I mean, a football field ahead of you. So it's about the communication and as to, you know, constantly um, taking advantage of those learning moments. Um, if it's something on TV or um, I think there was an article about, um, I think it was in Maryland where a kid charged $14,000 on his mom's credit card because he was using a gaming application. <laughs> and just think, you know, at that point, as a parent, I would have had that conversation. But I'm sure he wasn't really old enough to be using it anyway. Right. But, yeah. So, and then, so mom, actually, I think um, the credit card company said, we'll forgive, what, 1400 mm -hmm. But you have to, I think she ended up going to Google and they, I guess, went to court or something and they, she didn't ended up having to pay it. But think about it, you know, you put your credit card on your phone that you give your kids and there's this idea between virtual money and real money, mm -hmm. and they don't understand the difference. And, I, and just even with us, when we have our bank card, we use it more frequently than if we actually had cash. We used to hold on to cash um, a lot longer. So the kids are doing the same thing, but they don't have the cash, So, th and they don't uh, understand necessarily how to budget money at an early age, so they're just buying things. So just taking that as a learning opportunity. Or, you know, there's stories of how people are using things on social media. Um, and the reality is that the, we want our kids to make good decisions, but the frontal lobe, the brain, is not fully developed until age 25, 26. And that's scary because, you know, when we go to college, we think we're adults, right? But then you're still, you know, some of your decision-making is questionable. And I think there was a 
excuse, this is in Maryland again, a University of Maryland student who actually sent um, pictures to someone else on social media, and now they're using those pictures to blackmail this kid. So that, you know, these are the things that are going on around them, and just, you know, having those conversations, or how could you prevent this from happening, things like that. How do kids figure out what the next app is gonna be once, uh, you know, an app develops a, a fix that they don't like, how do they kind of coalesce around a new thing? It's like word of mouth, and as, as I say in, in the classroom, is that, you know, I never, I never knew about Snapchat until the kids started talking about Snapchat. Actually, or the kids started using Snapchat and they would hold the phone in front of them and dance and do pictures and sing songs. Um, but it's word of mouth, and I think never underestimate the power of the communication piece is that someone knows about it from another friend and it's passed on and sometimes it's just being on YouTube and they can Google this information like the power of Google is um, amazing you can find how to change a tire how to bake a cake and then also how to clean a gun you know it's just different things and information is out there as well but it's honestly word of mouth but and speaking of that the kids were actually um, a group of kids yesterday told me about this app called Talking Angela. Have any of you heard about it? And, and my understanding is, I have to do more research, but it's, um, you remember the Gigapets or the Digipets that we used to have? Mm -hmm. um, so it's an application that they're using on their phone. But the, parent, the kids are actually concerned about it because it's asking information as to where do you live, how old are you. Um, and I always encourage kids that anything that asks you where you live or how old you are, um, you sh probably should not be using it. And anything that requires your personal information, your parents should definitely be filling it out. Um, but then, I think one of the kids did say it was on the news and it's some type of tracking application, but it was the whole idea of the virtual pet, like our digital pet, digital pets, or what was it called? Tamaguchi. That, those. <laughs> <laughs> um, those, that whole idea. So it's kind of like on your phone now instead of actually having a different device. Any other questions? I was just going to ask if you have any advice for Minecraft specifically because so I have a second grader now who's really just gotten into Minecraft but I had a I have a seventh grader also and she started out harmlessly interested in Minecraft and my husband was kind of monitoring and so I was sort of out of it and then I realized you know a year into it but she had friends that she had met online and she was playing and she was chatting constantly while she was playing this like texting lines within mm -hmm. Minecraft. And and it then eventually she started FaceTiming. So she would be FaceTiming wow. with other kids while they were playing Minecraft. So like it, now they're like co joining you know, forms of social media. But I think, you know, for her we kind of roped it in. But my second year old is just in the foothills and now I'm like, how do we do this right this time? Like how do we prevent that? And, and the thing is this, I don't think FaceTime is a feature of <coughs> Minecraft, though, right? I'm totally unrelated. Just, yeah, you know, I was able to get them both going simultaneously. Yeah, and I think it's just having a conversation. Okay, this is a feature that's in the application. Um, identify some friends that you know at school who play this game, mm -hmm. and then maybe going parent to parent and having a conversation as to mm -hmm. this is the game that our kids are playing. Let's have a conversation with them as to what our expectations are, and understand that this is the trusted circle as to who you should communicate. Mm -hmm. But it goes back to communication because you, you. I don't think per Minecraft has parental controls because it's the gaming app, but it's just maybe you can possibly disable the chat feature, but I think you have to chat to play the game as well. So it's very tricky. So I think you can play standalone, and then you can play on a group server. Mm -hmm. And we experimented, my husband set up a private server where she invited a few of her friends so they could play together, friends she okay. met from school. But she, she said in the end that it's boring to play alone because the character, other characters that are in the game, you end up interacting and kind of that wow. interesting. So, but I think with her, if we had said from the beginning, like you will not group play Minecraft, it's a solo endeavor. Sorry, right? But that might have been a better idea. For and, so, and sometimes it is, and it's like never be um, scared to say no. I, and I will say this: that having access to the internet is a privilege; it's not a right. Um, having access to these devices is a um, privilege. You be comfortable. Do what's comfortable for you. And if it's her not using this application, then say that to her. Um, like I said, kids may not understand 
And how many of us, our parents told us no, we never understood why they told us no, but later on we, we understood why that was set in place. Any other questions? Do you have any guidelines, like written guidelines that we could give out to parents or something that they can look at off of the um, Fairfax County website that just kind of to summarize the stuff that you've done, you say, because I keep hearing you say expectations and have a constant line of communication. And, and you know, in today's day and age, it's, it's getting harder and harder because we're on our technology too and right. busy and making time for those things are so important. Um, it's kind of nice sometimes to have a little uh, written something to help remind you or help guide you in, oh, I didn't really talk about that. Or well, we thought she was just playing a game. And then you realize, right. wow, this is like pretty easy to, you know, it kind of snowballs mm -hmm. and of all the things that they can do that we don't even know I about. I signed up for Common Sense Media. Right. Yeah, Common Sense Media. Last too. year, after the presentation last year, and that was great, actually. That um, helped me really become familiar with some of the things to avoid, which was good. Right. And SPS uses Common Sense Media. If you go to the SPS website and just put digital citizenship in the internet safety end, um, it will take you to this web page. Um, so it will take you to the VDOE Internet Safety website. Um, what is digital citizen, digital privacy, students, families, um, and here are resources for families. And they use a lot of the common sense media stuff. Um, on how to talk with your kids, privacy and parental criminal settings. Um, I have not figured out how to use this new website yet. <laughs> but there's a link. So it connects you with different places as I keep, um, say, NetSmart, um, Family Online Safety Institute, but there's also a page with additional resources, and I think it might be on my side. But I, I heard can, of another resource that was actually like a, you could pay for it. It was, I think it was like $150, but you could pay for a scam, some sort of like, there was some organization that would actually do like an audit of your child's I think it was that one that I had found that gave you like the thumbs up or the thumbs down right. for the different apps, and it could educate you on that. And if you wanted to buy something that would scan your child's phone, you kind of look and see if they mm -hmm. had I'd have to go back to my office and look for that one because that was a really good, that would be a good one to have on there too. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but they do advertise that thing. You don't have to get it. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of nice for information because it was very brief. Brief. It wasn't a lot of reading on all the different apps. I, right. I thought it was a lot of money, but I think if you, if you, you know, feel you're totally in the dark and you need someone who knows what they're looking for mm -hmm. to look, that resource is out. Okay. So and how, do you remember how much it was? It was around $100 and $150 or okay. something like that. And it's called Scan? I don't remember the name. No, okay. Um, I can do some research. Um, under the <laughs> digital citizen citizenship, talking with your child, they, you know, they do have the family media agreement, so you can use this, um, or a customizable device contract, which you can use. If you do um, look at it more in detail, they do have different documents that you can use. Like I said, they use common sense media. Um, so there's different... Um, on the school side, lessons that they can pull from the intranet, um, and I can share that link with you, okay. um, that they can use. Also, I'm developing a TIF sheet, and just moving from the school side, I realized that everything has to go through approval process, where if you did it in class, you just kind of shared it, or <laughs> when you're in central office, you have to go through the approval process. So I'm waiting for that to be approved, and I'll share that piece with you guys as well. Um, any other questions? Mm -hmm. It was, I forgot I was on the website. Are parental controls, are those good to do? Are they easy to, you know, access? They're are easy. They, some people say, oh, the parental controls, I tried to look it up on YouTube one time and I didn't think it was so easy to access and then I couldn't tell if that was really gonna help anything. I think they're hit or miss um, because some 
um, controls are great. But I think about the YouTube one where you can set the parental controls. So once the kid realizes that you can log into YouTube with a different email that you create, they just bypass those controls. Um, so once they realize what year you are going to be older than 13, you know, or older than 18, <laughs> the, the, those things happen. I got a free trial for YouTube Red over the holidays, mm -hmm. and YouTube is a big concern of mine because my kids love watching like uh, the toy unboxing videos, and I have little kids, and right. then they also like to watch like the DIY, you know, like the ladies make the face masks or whatever. Uh, but that they, it can lead, so, you know, because it'll be like one video and another video, right. and then all of a sudden you like look over, and you're like, oh my god, you know. Right. But I think <laughs> YouTube Red um, took away the ads, and the ads were also super annoying, and I thought not always appropriate to the right. content that they were watching and then, so I thought that was really good and then it also I, I don't know I thought I thought it gave them a little like better experience it's like 10 bucks a month so but I mean I don't know if I would pay for it I got a free subscription but I thought it was a better safer experience on YouTube Red than on YouTube okay have you tried YouTube kids at all well yeah YouTube they tend to not be as satisfied with YouTube kids because okay. it's not getting because they like they like I don't know. They they get frustrated with it, and they, it doesn't give them the same history. It doesn't give them the same history. I don't know, but I have tried it before. Okay. The, the other good thing about YouTube Red, I, I haven't fooled around with it myself, but I understand that you can download content for viewing later. Yeah. So you can download things for your kids and then let them view it later, and they don't have access the entire. Oh, that's good. Library. Yeah. Yes, which is also mm -hmm. a nice feature, yeah. for, and also for like airplane and stuff. It's a good way to yeah. do it. Right. That's good. Um. In addition to, um, as I said earlier, our office does provide mentoring programs. So if you know a kid who will benefit from having a mentor, mm -hmm. or if you are an adult who would like to mentor a kid, um, feel free to contact Kristen Woodard, Woodward, who is um, who's actually on maternity leave. But call her number, is a to someone else. Um, and they can get you the information about um, setting up a mentor or doing your mentor application. It was great being here with you tonight. Um, as I said, Stefan Maskell is my coordinator, so if you have any questions in regards to SNR, please call him, not me. <laughs> um, but anything about internet safety, any questions that you have, um, feel free to reach out to me. I do know the county is looking to develop a um, webinar class on digital citizenship and computer, um, internet safety. Um, so that's something that could be possibly rolled out of the fall of next year, and it's something for parents and um, students. If you can, um, this is the link on program evaluation to um, my evaluation tool. If you can um, scan the QR code or write the URL down for later, I'll actually email it to you. Um, just fill it out. It is a part of my evaluation process, but all the feedback you give helps um, prepare a quality presentation. Thank you, guys. I hope it didn't keep you too late. Thank you. 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 Thank you.